Cheers. Welcome to today's session. Class is beginning. Music theory, advanced music theory. Um, taking roll call, who's here? Don't forget to do this if you are enjoying the live streams. Um, thanks for tuning in today. I'm just getting set up here in the office. Let's go ahead and get your instruments out and talk shop. Um, today's topic is the octatonic scale, the eight note half hole diminished scale. Um, it's a little bit more advanced than my usual topics, uh, but there's been an interest on Patreon for more advanced improvisation and advanced theory and composition. So I thought I would do a deep dive in this lesson and discuss the octatonic scale, which is oftentimes confusing for a lot of folks. It ties in directly with the Barry Harris method and for jazz improvisers and piano players, especially who like to think this eight note scale and the four dominant chords that can be extracted from it. So I would recommend that you take a look at the PDF that's attached to the link in the description if you haven't already grabbed it and um, type in the chat comments who you are, where you're at. David, yes, I knew you would be here. It's not the same if you were not here. And I appreciate you joining in on all, my, all of my live streams. Okay, so again, grab the PDF, it's free. Um, you don't have to be a Patreon member. Uh, don't forget to do this, please. Um, that helps, keeps these uh, live streams happening. Um, this is a theory applied theory session uh, specifically for the guitarist. Um, you can do it on the piano if you wish. You could do it on any instrument. It really helps to uh, hear it, you know, on chords. But today I've got the whiteboard behind me, so we're going to write it out and talk shop. But I do recommend that you sit at your piano or you have your guitar or ukulele in your lap. Hey, Randy, thanks for joining in again. Appreciate it. Um, I know you guys are all Patreon members, so that's great. I'm glad Patreon members are taking advantage of these live streams because I'm getting a lot of feedback from Patreon members regarding what songs, um, what materials they're enjoying. You guys are enjoying, so let me know. Keep it, keep it coming, and I'll keep it coming as well. So this is, again, an advanced theory lesson. And I say that because at this point, you got to know the basics. You have to understand what your major, minor, diminished, augmented triads are sus triads, uh, tertian, non-tertian. Um, you guys know about that, right? If you have any questions right now, ask me in the comments. Um, you got to know your pentatonic scale, your major and minor relative. Um, re really, relatively speaking, of course, major penta and minor penta, the blue scale. You've got to know your modes, okay? your diatonic modes, the church modes, the Greek church modes, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian, respectively, to the chord scale relationship. And, that, and I'm saying you got to know that. To me, like, that's that's jazz 101 right there. This is jazz 201. <laughs> Essentially, this is going one level higher. Um, and then, because we're really going to be talking a lot about altered chords today, uh, superimposing uh, chords on top of other chords, those would be called polychords, um, to get some really complex sounds that way. Okay, there's different, different, but there's only 12 different notes in music when you really think about it. So it's just really how we organize these sounds that, that gives it that particular flavor. But for you as a composer or improviser or arranger, um, or just a theorist in general, it's nice for you to understand different methods, different systems, each one is very valid. That's a long spiel. I'm just waiting for more people to tune in. So thanks for joining me. Type in the comments uh, who you are, where you're at, uh, if you're on Patreon or not. I always appreciate the Patreon members joining in. These are really for you guys. So these are these stay on YouTube for a little bit, some of them uh, longer than others. And then they go directly to Patreon and YouTube members only. Without further ado, I'm going to talk about this scale called the octatonic scale. It's an eight note scale, like a pentatonic scale has five notes. This is an octatonic scale, an eight note scale. 
There's two octatonic scales, essentially that you can have a half whole or a whole half. You can have it start on one note and then have it sequence so it, the sequence repeats as a half whole, half whole, half whole, or whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, till you get eight notes and it repeats at the octave. We're going to be dealing with the half whole, okay? We're going to start right now on G. This is as per the worksheet, so check it out. If you didn't already grab the PDF, grab the PDF in the description. It's free. Here we go, guys. G, ready? Can you see that okay? There's some balls on there. G. Half step above G is G sharp, but we also should call it A flat, just so that you really know all the names. Okay. Let me see if I can turn down the balls. That might be better. That's good. Okay, that's a half step. Now we need a whole step. So above that's going to be A sharp or B flat. So we have a half. This is the octatonic scale. Like I said, there's two of them that you can start on essentially, but essentially there's only three possible for this before it repeats. Kind of like the whole tone scale, there's only two whole tone scales. Well, there's only three octatonic scales that half whole diminished when you think about it, and we'll talk about that. So in this case, unlike the whole tone scale where you have a 50-50 chance of getting the right one, for the octatonic scale you have 33.33333% of getting the right one. This is the half whole diminished scale. And these days, jazzers will just call it the diminished scale. To be specific, this today what we're talking about is a half whole. So we've got a half step and a whole step. Now we need another half step, it's just going to be a B natural. And yeah, we'll probably use it in the harmonic note of C flat later, but I won't write that. So that's half step. Okay, we better, I better write a little bit smaller here. Now we need a whole step, that's going to be C sharp. Okay, I'm just showing you the formula. And then we need a half, uh, half step, whole step, D sharp. And then a half step, E, I'm gonna write the formulas in here. So we have a whole step, we have the, uh, let's see, where are we at here? Half, whole, right? I'm doing this very subtly. We have the G, half, whole, from whole step, half step. Now we need the, the C sharp, oh, that should be D, I'm wrong to. And that's half step, and then a whole step, and that's E, and then we need the F, which is the final half step before we repeat back to the octave, the whole step. Uh, so be sure to grab the PDF. That's in the link in the description if you want to see a better view of it. It's already written out for you. But I'm just writing it here, showing you the formula. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to play it on the guitar really quickly. It's really beautiful scale. Here's the easiest way to do it. G, half step. Then from there, go up a whole step. And then half. I'm going to show you this beautiful diagonal fingerings. Check it out. G, go up half step. G sharp. Whole step. So notice I'm, I'm sliding my first finger like this. Okay, now we're going to go to C sharp, which is a tritone from G. Do the same formula. Half step, whole step. Half step. And that's it before it repeats. That's an eight note scale. So we have this. We can take it up through the octaves. Okay. That's the easiest fingering to show you that whole scale. And that's called the octatonic scale. Half whole diminished scale. Can you guys see that okay? Please feel free to type in the comments. Let's get a little closer. Yeah, let's get closer today. There we go. Look at that. Pretty. 
Okay, this is a pretty advanced music theory lesson for you. Okay, music theory 201 today goes beyond the norm. Uh, type in the comments if you have any questions regarding the, form the formula for the scale. So what I'm gonna demonstrate, I'm gonna just kind of point out a few things here that I think are important and to take note of within this symmetrical, symmetrical like the whole tone scale. Within the symmetrical scale, you have a couple triads in here, right? You have, if you just start on G, for example, you have G, B, and D. That's a G major triad, okay? And I want you to think about this, G, B, D, that's G major. You also have G, B flat, D. That equals G minor. So this will be erased. I'm going to write this down. This is just a live lesson here. You have G major. You've got G minor. Well, guess what? G, B flat, A sharp, B flat. Remember, same name. This can also be called D flat. Well, guess what that is? G diminished. So you have G dim. You have G major, G minor, G major, G minor, G diminish. That's C sharp, we're gonna call it D flat. All in this one scale, we have all three triads. <laughs> Pretty brilliant. What about, you're probably wondering, what about augmented? Is there a G augmented? The answer is no. G, B, D sharp. Nope, no augmented. No augmented triad. So we had G major, G minor, and G dim. And if you then do the work, which we're going to, because it's symmetrical, we can do the homework, which usually I would have my private students, which I, how I did it was like, you have to figure out the chords in this scale, how it's extracted. But because the fact that it's symmetrical, it's going to repeat of three, of three frets, a minor third. For guitar players, we like frets. So if you started now on B flat, okay, let me go over here, B flat, D, F, that's B flat major, B flat, D flat, F, that's B flat minor. You, yeah, you got it. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I wonder if it's going to be B flat diminished, B flat, D flat, F flat, well, E flat, I mean, F flat and E are the same note, and that's the flat five. So that's diminished, B flat dim. So yeah, up, up a minor third, up three frets. You have these three triads, okay? You're probably wondering now, hmm, because it's a symmetrical scale and there's a pattern to it, I wonder if I go up three more frets, if I could then also extract major, minor, and diminished. Let's find out. So what's a minor third from B flat? It's gonna be C sharp or D, we'll call it D flat. Is there a D flat major? D flat, F, A flat. Hey, yeah, there's a D flat major. Try it. What about D flat minor? It'd be D flat, F flat, which is E, and then A flat, yeah. There's D flat minor. You're probably wondering, is there gonna be a D flat diminished triad? Also, let's find out. D flat, F flat, which is E, and then we got a double flat that A, so G, yeah. And this would be called A double flat, so that point. So yes, there's a D dim. Okay, now, you're probably really catching on to this pattern, the fact that we can go up three frets and because of the symmetrical quality of the scale, it's gonna do it again, the same thing. So if you think about what three frets higher from D flat or C sharp is, it's gonna be E. So let's do some spelling on E. An E major triad, E, G sharp, B. Let's check it out, E, G sharp, B. So this is why I was kind of mentioning that this is the requirement is that you understand your chord formulas, your triads, major, minor, diminished, augmented, sus chords, 
your seventh chord. You know, this is level two of music theory and jazz theory, if you are watching this video. So what I'm saying is go back to all my other previous materials for music theory, check those out, study those, watch my videos, get my PDFs. Okay, so now E minor. Is there an E minor triad? You probably are thinking, yeah, for sure, because of the symmetrical quality, right? Because it's going to keep repeating. Yeah, you're right. E, G, B. That's E minor. All right. So in order to make it diminish, you'd have E, G, B flat. You flat the fifth. Is that present? E, G, B flat. E dim. You could just put a little circle that I just spelled out. So we have these triads. How many of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve major, minor, and diminished triads all from this one scale. That's huge. That's huge. Twelve major and minor triads from one scale. I'll say that again. Twelve major, minor, and diminished triads from one scale. This is the power of the octatonic diminished half whole scale. That's huge. Now, this lesson could be really long, but I'm going to go straight to where a lot of you who are jazz players want to know more about the Barry Harris method and how that relates to the Dom chords Pat Martino talks about too. But again, I'm kind of just showing it to you from this route, understanding the scale and how to extract triads and now seventh chords. So let's start on, we know that these are your major triads, right? Well, guess what? If we, could, we know that these four, we just did the homework, that there are four major triads in this one scale, the octatonic scale, half whole, half whole, half whole, half whole. We know that there are four major triads. They are a minor third apart. A minor third apart. What does that mean for us on the guitar? That means this. We can slide it. Do that again. G. I'll say it as I do it. G. I'll do it this way. G. B flat. D flat. And E. Just going up three frets. Any major triad formation. Three frets. Three frets. Three frets. Okay. Any major. We can even do minor. 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 And we are extracting chords, and of course, <laughs> the diminished triad, right? Any one of those going up three frets. And that's all within this one beautiful scale. And that's how you get these symmetrical licks. They are so beautiful. You can do stuff like this and add a whole step. And that's how that all works, okay? That's the symmetrical quality. We could do licks like this, and then go up. We could do those triads that are either based off the root, the flat three, the flat five, the tritone, or the six degree, which is the double flat seven, okay? How are you guys doing on this? You getting it? Thumbs up, thumbs down, you don't like it? Well, you asked for it. You asked for advanced theory, and I'm going to give it to you. I've already got a pretty good lesson that's on Patreon that shows the application of a lot of this in the theory, but I apply it to the song Caravan. Uh, so check out that lesson if you have access to Patreon, my Patreon, and you're at the platinum level. That's where those lessons are archived. Okay, so let's talk about these dominant chords, because that was one of the questions that popped up recently was, Someone said, so Tracy, are you saying that you can, thanks Yukon. Um, someone said, are you saying that over one dominant chord, you can actually have four dominant chords? Let's find out the answer. Okay, I want you guys to do this process with me. So as I just left off here, we know that we have these major triads, four of them in the key, okay? Out of the scale. In order to make them seventh chords, dominant seven, we have to add a flat seven. So G, B, D, F. Whoa, what do you know? 
G7 is in this. Hmm, what about B flat seven? B flat, you have to spell it. Again, spelling is crucial. Don't neglect spelling if you want to be a theory, a theorist. I was going to say theorist. If you want to be a music theorist, if you want to understand this, you've got to analyze your favorite jazz standards. And that's what I'm here for, to help guide you in this process and to double check your homework, your work. If I say E flat major seven, you say E flat G, B flat D. If I say C minor seven, you say C, E flat G, B flat. If I say F sharp minor seven flat five, you say F sharp A, C, E. That's called spelling. You've got to be fast at that, okay? I mean, this is, again, taking you to that next level that I want to see everybody at. Um, I need more coffee, as you can tell. And this will help you. Sure, what ultimately matters is that you understand it and that you can play it and that you can hear it. But again, there's going to be a certain amount of understanding both on your instrument, respectively, if it's on the guitar and or just on paper. So we know there's a G7. I'm just, I'm, I don't want you just to read it from a piece of paper or a book. I want you to do this homework with me. Again, this is how I learned it, by writing it out and experimenting. I want you to do that with me. And we've already done this. As you see, we're going through this process. If you're just tuning in, by the way, hi, if you're just tuning in, we're taking the octatonic eight note diminished scale, the half whole diminished, and we are extracting triads. So far as a summary, from one scale, this eight note scale, we've got 12 major, minor, and diminished triads. Those are the tertian triads, the tertian built on stacked thirds. Now we're taking it one level further so that we can apply it to how a lot of jazz players think of it, especially piano players, such as the famous Barry Harris and that Barry Harris method, the system of thinking about using other dominant chords. It's coming from this eight notes scale, but we have to do the homework, okay? I don't want you to just to believe what you hear. You've got to do this with me. So my question is, is there a B-flat dominant seven in here? You got to spell it. Is there a B-flat, D, F, and A-flat? B-flat, D, F, A-flat, bam. And now you're probably getting the symmetrical quality of the scale and saying, oh yeah, I get it because it's symmetrical. You're going to get all of these sounds. That's kind of the beauty of this sound, the scale and this flavor are some of these, but when we use it in jazz, this is how you get some really beautiful altered chords and colors. Let's go on. Is there a D flat seven? Well, what is a D flat seven? And here again, I'm gonna just grab my guitar in this case and show you. D flat, root, third, fifth, flat seven. The flat seven is a funny one. It could be called B or C flat, okay, on the D flat seven chord. Did you guys get that, how I appreciated it? That helps me spell. Virginia, thank you very much. I appreciate the feedback. Yukon, good stuff, thanks. Um, if you guys are enjoying this lesson, please let me know, um, gauge it out to see um, you know, who's all interested in some heavy music theory here, because I'll go on further with this, and you know, I love talking shop, as long as I have some coffee with me. You guys are probably gonna see an ad, by the way. Tell me what you see. I'm curious on what you guys get ads for. So D flat seven, D, we got the D flat, the F, A flat, and the B, which is C flat. Bam. There's a D flat seven. Okay, let's go on. One more. Is there an E seven chord? Well, my question to you, Virginia, spell me an E seven chord. Anybody, type in E seven as fast as you can. This is the spelling portion that I recommend you get fast at. E, G, sharp, B, D. You got to be able to just, bam, know those chords. Be able to spell it, okay? If, if you want to get strong at your music theory, spelling is one of the most important things you can do, okay? Music theory is separate from playing. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's not going to say you're a better guitar player than the next guy because, you know, your music theory, it doesn't. It doesn't mean anything. But if you want to understand this, you've got to know your spelling. Woodworkers, hmm, interesting. You've been visiting Home Depot lately? Okay, so let's not get too sidetracked here, but that's thanks for letting me know. I appreciate it. So spelling, 
my spiel. Be quick at spelling. A minor 7. A-C-E-G. Let's quiz you again. C minor major 7. C, E flat, G, B natural. That's how fast I want you to spell these chords, okay? So if you're not at that level, take your favorite song, write out the list of chords that are in that song. Could be Autumn Leaves, could be Blue Skies, My Funny Valentine, could be a Beatles song, could be just triads. Do it as much as you can while you're drinking your coffee. Spell those chords on a piece of paper, okay? And then go to your guitar when you have time and arpeggiate those chords. If you need to arpeggiate those chords to spell it, do so as I demonstrated. Quick music school story back in the old days when I was going to music school at eight, eight o'clock in the morning, we'd have our timed theory tests, where it's exactly what I'm just talking about now. We would sit there. I would always sit in the very top, the very back of the room, the lecture hall, these time tests. You have one minute to do as much as you can to time these, to spell these chords and structures. And as I said, I do, I was always really fast at it because I get, I did it a lot already. I was a speller and look around at my other musician friends and colleagues and everybody is doing this. They're all thinking about their fingerings because they know their arpeggios up and down. That's the secret to spelling. You got to know your formulas and you got to know your arpeggios on the piano, on the guitar, on the saxophone whatever, know your fingering so that you can visualize it in your head on the piece of paper. So again, my, my request to you as a member on Patreon or just anybody who's watching these YouTube videos out there, if you want to get better at theory, do not neglect spelling. And if you need help with just the basic formulas, you know, major seven, one, three, five, seven, major six, one, three, five, six, and all the dominant seventh chords, if you need help just learning that stuff, um, check out my Patreon page and check that out. That's all, all the formulas are on there. But now this is the next level. Okay, so it's a new year and hey, I'm starting out with some new stuff that I usually, you know, um, say for the advanced Patreon platinum tier level stuff, but I'm going to share this at all tiers for this one. Uh, this is all important stuff. So now, guess what? We have four dominant seven chords. Four dominant seventh chords that are extracted from this one scale. And this scale, this G, I'm calling it a G half whole diminished, can also be called B flat half whole diminished. It can also be called D flat half whole diminished. And it can also be called E half whole diminished. Those are all, quote, modes of each other by starting on the same degree that they repeat. There are only three possible half whole diminished scales. So again, you have a 50, no, not 50, 50, 33.3 chance of getting the right scale as long as you get that. There's other really some, there, I want you to explore this because there's you're gonna find there's other really beautiful aspects that are coming out of there. Besides the fact that when you have a G7 chord, you can also play and behind me here, B flat seven over that G seven. You can play D flat seven. You can play E seven over that G seven. There, there's so many cool things that you can do. And of course you can do stuff like this, um, triads or this seventh. That's the cheap and easy thing to do. These licks You're just sliding around three frets, you know. It's so easy for guitar players to be thinking this stuff. But there's also something that's really beautiful on here um, that I want to, to point out, and that's the fact that we have. I'll show it to you. Here's a scale. Then it just repeats. So you have this. That's a diminished seven arpeggio. If you go up a half step. You have another diminished seven arpeggio. You have this diminished seven off of G and this diminished seven off of G sharp or A flat. Or check it out with chords. So I'm taking a diminished seven. And I'm sure you all know this. I talked about this yesterday in my Pat Martino lesson about how he calls this an automatic nature of the guitar. 
this diminished seven, sliding every three frets. But what he doesn't talk about necessarily in his lessons is that you go up a half step and then do the same thing. And then when you combine it, you get this octatonic scale. This is another use of it besides the four dominant chords and the 12 major, minor, and diminished triads. Again, this is a really vast topic for you to explore. And I hope you spend some time sitting down and looking at it, playing it on your instrument. Know your arpeggios, know your dominant seven, know your triads, your major, minor, and diminished, and augmented. Know those things. You know, I think that's fundamental. That's again, Jazz Guitar 101. Jazz Guitar 201, 301, 401 is diving further into this particular scale and into this topic. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I hope that clarifies a few things about being able to play dominant seventh chords on top of other dominant seventh chords to get very different sounds. Yukon, you got the Jerry Han method books. Awesome. Jerry Han was one of my teachers. And I, on Patreon, I'm going through some of the Jerry Han exercises, some of my favorite. Uh, those are on Mel Bay. They're great books, and there's a lot of good stuff. Um, well, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate your time. I hope this clarifies and opens up some new ideas. Please check it out, and I'll have some more materials on Patreon going further into this topic. Thanks. Cheers.